Cold air intakes and short ram intakes are a common mod on any vehicle. I'm also a big fan of the concept of not doing anything to your vehicle unless you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Now the concept of an intake kit is pretty straightforward. You get a smoother pipe so you have smoother airflow. You get a high flow air filter so you have less resistance. And then you try and position the air inlet into some area that gets you cold, fresh air. Now there's a lot of information and misinformation on intake kits all over the internet. So here I'm going to give you the 10 truths about intake kits, some of them specific to the Nissan Xterra, some of it generically applied to any vehicle. Truth number 10 is that the biggest factor in an intake kit performance is going to be where you draw the air from. The temperature of the air that you're drawing from is going to play the biggest role in the temperature of the air by the time that it gets combusted. Especially when your engine is running at mid RPM or high RPM, it's drawing air in so rapidly that it doesn't really have any measurable amount of time to actually increase in temperature. So you don't need to worry so much about thermal barriers as much as it is getting the air from a good source. And of course the stock air box on the Nissan Xterra here it's got this nice wonderful tube here and that's going to draw in air both from the fender especially if you got two inlets here if you do the stock airbox mod so the stock airbox is actually very effective at drawing in cool fresh air so with the stock airbox the air filter is completely enclosed by this box so that actually gives you really good protection off-road it gives you protection from mud it gives you protection from dirt and debris and also from water you don't want to hydro lock your engine because you have an air filter dangling down on the bottom of the pipe Truth number eight is that the engineers at any major automotive manufacturer has already done far more research and analysis than any of the biggest intake companies out there. So trust engineers. Truth number seven is that high flow filters are often flowing high amounts of air because the overall pore diameter in the filter media is larger. That offers less restriction, but it also offers less filtration capability. So you gotta make sure that you get a good filter because no matter what type of intake kit you have, it's got to be able to do job number one, which is protect your engine. Truth number six is specific to oiled air filters, but you got to be careful, especially not to over oil your air filter at your cleaning maintenance, because you don't want to contaminate your mass airflow sensor. I've never actually experienced this before, but there are anecdotal stories on the internet, and it seems plausible given the location of the filter and where the mass airflow sensor is. So be careful. Truth number five is you gotta understand how you measure horsepower on vehicles. It's not just a single number. You're looking at the entire RPM range. And so you could very well gain five or seven horsepower with an intake kit at 5,800 RPM, for instance, on a Nissan Xterra maybe. But if you lose five horsepower at say 3,000 RPM where you spend the majority of your time actually driving, that's not going to be a good trade-off. So you gotta understand and be wary of all these inflated numbers offered by intake kit manufacturers. Truth number four, is even with dyno results, dynos have inherent error in them. There is going to be dyno noise, so to speak. There is going to be variation from sample to sample and run to run, even if it's done on the same day. If it's an hour later and you install a kit and you do three dyno runs, it's quite possible that you're going to get slightly different readings. Even if I saw five horsepower gain at a certain RPM range on a dyno run, honestly, I would suspect that that's more in the lines of dyno noise and it's very little to no gain at all. So you got to be careful about trying to be precise with a dyno using an instrument that may not actually be that level of precision. Truth number three is specific to Nissan Xterra's with a body lift. But if you get a kit that has a heat shield, remember the heat shield is going to bolt into the body to isolate the air filter. But when you do a body lift, the body goes up, but the throttle body and the engine is going to be mounted to the frame. So it's not going to fit. So especially if you have a body lift, try not to get a kit that has a heat shield on it. Truth number two about intake kits is that most stock intake systems on other vehicles have some type of modifications that you can do to them for cheap or almost free that would give you similar performance as a type of intake kit. I got another video about the stock intake mod which is basically removing a baffle here and that doubles your overall intake surface area that you have there. You can pair that with say a high flow AEM dry flow filter that's a non-aired filter and you've got excellent performance that's right up there with an actual intake kit. And that gives me to truth number one. Truth number one about intake kits, damn it, they're fun, they sound cool, and as long as you understand what you're doing, that is good enough reason to install one. So that's what I got here. It's a nice $50 little short ram intake kit. You can get it on Amazon, but I chose this one specifically because I didn't want a heat shield because I have a body lift. I don't trust 
cheap generic air filters. So I decided to pair this with an AEM dry flow filter, which I have confidence in its filtration ability and also its durability under water and mud and dirt when I go off-roading. But this tube right here, it has the inlets so that you can have your crankcase breather and idle air control valve and you also have uh, your EGR vent tube here. So I chose this intake kit specifically because of this pipe right here. And it comes with all these other cool blingy hoses that are always fun. Comes with your mass airflow sensor adapter, a little rubber gasket so you don't get air leaks. And it comes with a couple little brackets that you can bolt on somewhere to secure your filter so it's not banging around. Now you can buy generic sheet metal at Lowe's and Home Depot that's easy enough to bend and make my own heat shield and that's something that I might end up doing. But for right now, I gotta give a shout out to D.E. Nichols. He's got a nice YouTube channel that does some more Nissan Frontier stuff. He's actually done a lot of YouTube videos about different types of intake kits, this one specifically, and I decided to go ahead and spend the 50 bucks and put it on my own truck. So let's take a look. So once you get rid of this accordion hose, which by the way is also prone to dry rot and cracks, which can be a nice air leak that can be difficult to diagnose, you want your mass airflow sensor. So go ahead and get some mass airflow sensor cleaner. Just spray it off, make sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and put this adapter. This is going to be an adapter bracket that should line up with these bolts. You might need to get your own hardware for this. I got some one inch long bolts from Lowe's Home Depot or whatever. And we're just gonna bolt it up. So the three inch straight through sleeve is gonna go on the mass airflow sensor. And then you're gonna go ahead and get a hose clamp ready. I like to position hose clamps in a way that makes sense so that you can easily get to the screw head. These are pretty accessible in the engine bay. I'm gonna go ahead and get another hose clamp queued up. And now I'm just gonna connect the silver tube. Look how straight that intake is. The reducing collar is going to go on the other end and the small end of this reducing collar connects to the throttle body. One of the hose clamps is smaller so I'll save that one for last. And I'll go ahead and clamp this sleeve on. All that's left is to connect this to the throttle body and I'm going to have to fab up a bracket here. It's usually good to use like a 90 degree bracket like this and then hook it into the hose clamp right underneath the filter here and then just try and find a place on the body to mount it. I'll have to see what I come up with. So this is what I came up with. I just took about an inch on the end of this aluminum bracket and just bent it in a 90 degree angle using a bench vise and just my hands. It's very easy to bend aluminum. I'm going to be able to mount this straight to the bottom and then this hole right here, I'm going to bolt to one of the bottom holes on the mass airflow sensor. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So this is the intake all hooked up, mass airflow sensor. You got your like EGR vent line, both of your stock vent lines hooked back up. I didn't want to use the blingy tube that they give you. So I got the normal black tubes hooked up, but you got the silver tube here, connected to your throttle body, mass airflow sensor, mass airflow sensor adapter. 90 degree bend here. This was a hole that was already in the top of the fender. So I just put a bolt and a nut and a couple washers through. And then you can see on the back of the mass airflow sensor, I had a bolt that was long enough to just hook that bracket onto there. So now it's gonna be nice and sturdy. And I don't gotta worry about the filter flopping around. The last thing to note when installing cold air intake kits is this air temperature sensor. This measures the temperature of the intake air and the ECU uses it to make combustion decisions off of. Now it's normally in that little elbow tube on the stock elbow. So you can just have it zip tied out of the way as long as it's close to the filter. Some people actually drill a hole in the top of the filter so they can stick it actually inside the filter which is the actual air that's being intaked by the engine and took, intake, I don't know. I just zip tied it because I don't want to drill a hole through a brand new like $60 AEM dry flow filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and Put the hose clamp on my filter and my intake will be complete. And this, my friends, is the final product with the filter on. It is a little bit tight next to the pressure sensor coming off of the air conditioning condenser, but there's no real interference. A couple wire harnesses here. 
Now I always have the option of fabricating a heat shield, in which case I would just get rid of this bracket and I would basically drill a hole through the sheet metal here and I'd tie it into maybe some brackets for the old intake air box or maybe this bracket bolt here and then I'd have to tie it in somewhere on the body. But for right now, this is what I'm gonna leave it at and I think that it should work. But you know what we have to do now is the obligatory, I just installed a cold air intake so now I'm gonna rev my engine a few times to show it off. Pretty cool, am I right?